name is Dion Henry. Um, I am a complementary therapist. My background uh, was in psychiatric social work. Um, so I worked all over London. Um, and, you know, I had a kind of um, awakening really um, of like, who, I, who am I? Am I all I ought to be? Is this really who I am? Um, I was becoming an older person, an older version of myself in a very demanding job. Um, I then um, did uh, some work with the forced migration service. And as a result of that, um, I came across um, um, how people used aromas to help people who were in distress. And as a result of that, I changed, I rebranded and became an aromatherapist, a clinical aromatherapist with an award-winning school. Um, I've become one of their mentors. Um, and then as a result of that, um, learning about, um, so it was aromatherapy dealing, involved with pathologies. Um, and then I became interested in massage that dealt with musculoskeletal issues that dealt with pathologies. And as a result of that, I became interested in the disease, cancer, because um, lifestyle issues and also working in the psychiatric se sector, I found that lots of my clients had cancers and who died of cancers. And then I started to think about how we really supported our patients who were dying. That was a big gap. It was a yeah. full circle kind of event for me and how we as a team supported people through that process. We didn't, we just got on with stuff. So I uh, rebranded, left my role, um, left London to give birth to that role. And it was only when I left London, then something came up in London and I went to a conference in my, London at number one Marsden. And one of the last presentations, and actually at the moment, it was actually in my neck of the woods where I used to work. So I thought, oh, that's a surprise. And so one of the um, presentations was by a person, an amazing person called Felicity Warner, who talked about soul midwifery. And it was the last presentation of the day. And I just thought, goodness me, I've come all the way back to my old stomping ground to, 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 to receive this gift. It was the missing piece of the puzzle. It was like, like the where's Wally in my sort of work life story. I found yeah. it. And um, that was in 2017. I stepped away from it. I thought this is really, really great. I, I absolutely fantastic, but I've left London. I need to build up my complimentary therapies business. And then I, um, I did an, uh, a, a little, I did a little um, a level two end of life course. Um, one of those online courses and then it kind of warmed me up again I got a bit warmed up and then um, that led me into making an application to become a soul midwife and so I did the distance learning I passed the distance learning and then I went to Dorset I was fortunate enough to go to the soul midwife school in Bridport in Dorset and the rest is history um, and what what was really quite interesting about the soul midwife midwifery training was that it spoke to my aromatherapy because yeah. we use sacred oils it spoke to my um, um my fascination with sound because we use sound modality in the work and um and i met some amazing people from all walks of life um who were involved in this work and it also enabled me to in the distance learning part of the module to to think about my experience with those people who have died so clients who have died relatives who have died who have died and to explore my own death my own, own mortality because part of the training invites you to 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 consider your own mortality we're all going to die one day yeah, so um, to consider my mortality and it was really interesting at that time that i i saw um, an article from someone who talked about buying a bouquet of flowers. So you buy a beautiful bouquet of flowers, you know they're cut and you know they're going to go in the vase and you know that they're dying, but you tend to them, you look after them, you put, you know, and all the rest of it, but you, but that's probably why I actually, when I get a bouquet of flowers or tulips, I actually look at them until they're actually died, you know, um, and 
I almost stopped family members from whipping them out of the, the vase to, to, to get new ones. No, let's just see, see this, this event. And so you might top it up with fresh water and do all sorts of things just to keep it looking bonny and but we're all going to meet mm -hmm. our life end. So yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I began this journey and I believe that I'm traveling it well. How amazing. Oh, what a wonderful metaphor. I love that. I was actually looking at a vase of peonies I've got in the kitchen later. I'm going to go and top up the water because they're starting. So they've, and then, they've, they've missed their peak now. They're on the other way down. That's what we do. So therefore, if they've missed their peak, then I would say they were in a pre-active stage where we meet people with their first diagnosis and they're quite fairly well. And then they go into another phase, an elemental stage, you know, another phase, and then they go for the dying phase and then they, they, they die. So the seasons. Yeah. Um, trees. Yeah. Perfect um, analogy. Um, um, so therefore, this, this, this journey concentrates minds mm. and you look at everything, everything in wonder. Yeah. Oh and, wow. Um, and and that's 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 my passion basically. So how amazing. Um you've mentioned about being a soul midwife. I don't know if everyone knows what a soul midwife is. Just in its basics, what is it? Soul midwives regard every dying person in their care as if he or she is the most important person in the world. Think of a baby, first child or a puppy or whatever, is the most important, delicate entity in the world. All people that a soul midwife comes into contact with are cared for as a, you know, again, as a cherished friend or family member. We have the skills, we have the time and we have the specialist knowledge through training, go out and seek the training and explore as if the dying person to make a huge difference on the dying, dying person's journey towards the end of their life. And um, we offer a range of complementary therapies, which are taught on the course uh, to soothe and reassure people. And we're skilled advocates and advisors and we are non-denominational. So, mm -hmm. We come, take us as you find us, basically. We meet you where you are yeah. in our pastoral support. And we encourage deep conversation with love and dignity about dying, people's fears, um, and all of that sort of stuff. And we work from the, from the point of diagnosis and continue to the final day of life. Mm -hmm. And always, as with our flowers, continuing living to the end. Oh, amazing. And that's, that's what we do in a nutshell. So we're non-denominational, you know, we're, yeah. we're, we're just take us as you find us. We meet you where you are and oh. we're guided by you. You know, people are in the, in, in the driver's seat. And in soul midwifery, we refer to um, no dying person will be friendless. So we refer to the dying person as a friend. Yeah, yeah. And when you, um, you very helpfully provided us an overview between the difference of being a soul midwife and a death doula, could you briefly outline what that difference is as you see it? Okay, so when I did my training, um, I never knew what a doula, like, a, 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 what a doula, doula was. I've heard of birth doulas who support women to, like, deliver mm. babies. Um, and it was interesting. I was looking on a meetup. I think it was a meetup or I saw something about a death cafe and um, a local person was training to be a doula and uh, that person was doing a death cafe. So I thought, oh, OK, I will I'll go along to this this death, death cafe where people, not only people who are dying, but anybody who's interested in the, in the subject of death as a taboo subject and um should go along so she was facilitating this cafe as part of her course and um there was a really healthy conversation because I thought oh I thought it was just soul midwifery um but 
what I discovered was that, um, and I'm, my background's in social work. So for me, I would say that a, a doulas, we, soul midwives, our absolute focus is on the dying person. You would not leave a baby to go and do the gardening. You, you know, that you're, but you're, you're delivering someone over into the next phase of whatever mm. of all that is um and i think with the doulas they do exactly the same things as us but they they would be also involved in a quasi social work sort of role so they would look at family and do a bit more advocacy and um more hands-on but whereas we're a bit more touchy-feely so we'll be using oils and vigiling and blessings and all that and a lot more complementary therapies and psychopomp work you've also got soul midwives who are also doulas yes so, yes i can imagine there's a huge overlap actually between so there's a huge overlap but they're just the differences are very very subtle yes and um i find that with um uh my, my husband said well you know um when i think about doulas um, this is his, uh, he has to own this view, it goes public, um, that the, the doulas are more like um, CBT kind of yeah. model and, and, um, and um, he sees um, uh, soul midwifery as, as we're, we're kind of psychotherapy quite deep and really deep kind of um, um, pioneers, you know, um, um, Felicity often says refers to the um, mistresses of the oils and, and Maya for that's kind of her uh, her 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 thing. So I think um, yeah we're kind of probably a bit more touchy feely I would say and mm -hmm. and um, doulas will be more more uh, inclined to be a bit, bit, bit more advocacy. I've I've been in situations with um, um, supporting people, my friends, um, dying friends and um family members have asked me to do things and i've sort of politely reminded them that i'm here for the person who's dying yeah so if everything that they they need they want i think a byproduct of my my involvement is is enabling families to go off and do whatever they need to do yeah yeah so um uh, you know it might sound a bit adult sitting but that's kind of what what, what it is yeah. you're, you're there you're a companion at the bedside yeah, that's absolute devotion is for yeah. the person at the bedside, whereas yeah. I wouldn't sort of spread myself out thinly because that person would also have a care package, I assume, in place and have other people to do that sort of stuff. And maybe sometimes if that other sort of stuff wasn't going so well, it might a doula might probably be a bit very assertive or on it and, and that sort of stuff. Mm. So um, so there are lots of overlaps. I'm not saying each is set in stone, but I will just sometimes wonder why some soul midwives also train as doulas so one so each you know so you know maybe it might meet something that's missing in one thing and the other yeah but i can see i can see that there would be overlap for sure of course. Uh, yeah um what was i mean when you kind of talk about being by the bedside in my head i've got a vision because i mean it's like we're, we're all dying right if we think about those flowers it could be 30 years how do you break it down on a day by day basis? What does do you how do you know? Because you've got to sleep as well, right? Presumably you've got to eat. Okay. So could you okay. describe a bit of how the logistics of how it works? How it works is well, you're you're doing sessional work. So if it's if I, I regard it as a, like a complementary therapy sort of model, so you're you're going to be commissioned to do a certain number of hours or if yeah. someone I mean you've got to be like there is a common sense element to all of this as well so you might yeah. actually say I'm I'm going to be with you up to two hours or up to whatever if someone you know again I've been in situations where someone's at the point of death and um, I've just stayed on um, uh, but you 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 would negotiate how much time you will be spent so up to x number of hours um yeah. so you'll be there pumping up pillows or making drinks or doing a a, 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 a ritual of some sort i mean if someone's dying you're, you're vigiling so vigiling is like 
scheduling. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, I don't think the, you know there's no like you started so you're like I started so I finished. You know, you, there's no no meter running. It's quite ambiguous. It's um, yeah. It's, I think it's very, I feel it's quite crude to say, well, you know, after an hour, it's like, bye, see you later, you know, um, but you are, and you know, people are sleeping, the hearing's the last sense to go, they can hear you, um, and you let people know that when you're going, or when you're arriving, or I stand at the foot of the bed, it's quite passively interactive and actively interactive, you, yeah. see, you, you know, you're, 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 you're asking the person, how could, be, how could I be of service to you today? And that might be just doing nothing. Yeah. Well, that might mean, all right, you've. I want you to go now. I've been. I've had a ten-minute visit. I've had a two-hour visit. I've had a five-hour visit. Yes. So it can it can basically change depending on what the person it, wants. It changes according to what is happening in that space, um, and you, by your presence and the family members. The family members are quite. Um, they observe, they watch, you know, I've got, I've got like so many like eyes in the back of my neck sometimes like just watching and, and, and they kind of feel then comfortable to let go. And then they, they seem to come in at the right time and then I can go at the right time. So it's kind of like a rhythm. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a dance. It's yeah. a dance. It's a waltz. It's a dance. Yeah. You know, it's a dance. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that business like around, around that sort of stuff. Well, no. Yeah, you you know, you kind of you you just know, you know. You can read um, you you've got to be you're probably not doing the sign of work if you can't read the room, if you can't read what people need. Read. And also I, I I might you might ask me this question about boundaries. Mm. Um having knowing knowing that's that level of self-awareness yeah. um is really important and having that those, those sorts of boundaries. I always my top tip is I always have a good feed up before um I go to a session. I make because you could be there for some time. I could be there for some time. Um, people might offer you a drink or something like that, and you, you keep it real. That's 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 fine. But I make sure that I'm I'm on a full tank. Yes, I like it. I like it. Good preparation. Um, preparation so, prevents poor performance. So tell us a bit about you know what are the skills that you use. T talk us through the sort of the things that what would you like kind of. A, a typical week look like for you because I'm hearing a lot about the sort of side of the bed piece of the work but I'm assuming there's also a information piece an education piece a talking to family piece a building your website piece a billing piece an admin piece so what are the kind that's, of right, that's the wrap that around piece. talk me through right, the whole okay. the whole bit okay I have uh I I'm I, I don't so I don't do this full time. I've got a, other about a million and one other things that I do. So I call I I actually call it I have a soul midwife Monday, okay, where I allocate two to three hours where I'm just thinking about um, the, the people that I've worked with, the people that I need to remember who have died, um, the the referrals that have come. Well, I um, the referrals come to me by word of mouth. I've just been very blessed to have a word of mouth. So I don't have really have that, that online presence. I may have an online presence in the future because I'm also trained to be a funeral celebrant, but that's just another another interview yeah. thing on the line. Um, so um, I have a soul midwife Monday where I allocate two to three hours um, uh, um, on a Monday um, or or if, if it really is a bit wobbly, I, I make sure that I allocate at least two to three hours in that week to, to, to some midwifery. So I do follow-ups, I do, we do, um, after our uh, practitioner level one training, we do what we call tender loving care training, which is uh, where we can, we're trained to go deliver training about dying. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we will deliver that to care homes or, or anybody. Uh, other professionals, public sector people. So I think about um, who I can pro approach um, yes. in that. Um, I do very few because I'm doing a number of other things, but so I think about that. Um, I think about um, invoicing. I think about gifting because I do part volunteer, part time donation, part invoicing um, people. 
um yeah that's kind of how i and and again out of this uh um time allocation with the, the the whole thing around funeral celebrancy was born so that was part of came out of that business development time um thinking about well if i'm helping supporting people to to tell their life story and do memory boxes and things like that well i'm with somebody whilst they are just arrived in the bar why don't i support them to tell their story who they are and maybe to support them to write their own eulogies yes absolutely so that's kind of what happens on soul midwife mondays um and it's a time to be just reflect and look after myself a bit as well and just to make sure that i'm uh that i'm pitching everything at the right level so i try not to work with more than two people yes so i'm not working with loads and loads of people um, I need to just be mindful of that and also to network with other people as well. Yeah. Um, so I'm networking with some because a lots of lots and lots of people approach me about, oh, I'd love to be a soul midwife. Oh, I really like what you do. Oh, you look really cool. You make dying look cool. Um, and uh, you're a northern soul midwife and all that sort of stuff. So like so um, so setting aside some time to, to look at that, having those conversations within that those three hours you know time setting some time aside to have the, and setting up meetings um yeah. which i did the other 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 week and also looking at the the death year calendar as it were looking at things like death awareness week um events that we can you know um um attend or get involved with or or reaching out to gps just just networking phone networking 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 just just really um, doing that so yeah max three hours I, I also um meet with a, a mentor and we have like a soul midwives um close group uh um that we meet i think it's once a month mm -hmm. so that hour that's those three hours one of those hours is assigned to to attending that on a saturday morning yeah you sound like you're very disciplined about how you allocate your time i'm very um um I think it's really important because it's part of a health check and I think it's part of self-compassion. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm just saying, because, you know, my background has been in psychiatric social work. So I've come from um, seeing what chaos can do. Um, and I, and I don't like feeling chaotic. Yeah. And when you, I don't sorry. like feeling chaotic So um, um, And I think in this, um, and, knowing the value of time so i'm 58 and i turned 50 and i just really that's when i had my time check so um so all the time that i thought i had pre hawaii 50 now yeah I, I, I waste my time wisely <laughs> i love it people could learn so much more from you than just the midwifery stuff. Um, when you were describing it and you're sort of saying, well, this is your sort of one day a week, what I'm taking from that is it's not a full-time job. No. Could you could you expand on that a little bit? So when people are, if they if you were to manage people's expectations because they're thinking, well, I want to do this as my job, this is going to be my new thing. What would what would your expectation management advice to them look like? Um start low go slow um because you can build on it i think when you do your film midwife training one of the good things about the training that I, I found really beneficial is that you can do the tlc the tender loving care training course and that you could take that that on on the road basically i mean that's like 50 pound per person 500 you know 10 people you know you could be that's that's I think that's a really good foundation to 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 build to to turn that into a business. Yeah. That, that 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 for me is like the golden ticket. If yeah. you if people wanted to go down that go down that that road, um, and the soul midwife and the and the and the sitting at the bedside and doing all of that other stuff can can be, you know, um, the cart as it were. The horse yeah. can be the TLC and the cart bit 
you know, can be yes. um, the soul midwifery bit. I think that's kind of where I've seen other soul midwives take their show out on the road in that respect. They host death cafes as well um, uh, on a donation basis or, or however um, they run that. But I mean, so I think out of the TLC model, the tender loving care model, which is Felicity from the Felicity Warner Soul Midwife School, that I think is where uh, the yeah. expectations can be can be um yeah you you you, yeah, you can take that expectation to another level yeah you know yeah. I think I think but it's presumably this isn't a job if people are thinking oh I can give up my full time job and I've got this mortgage to pay and I've got all these bills to pay you'd probably say to them I would say I would just say consider that I've... very carefully and I think yeah. you have to look at your your whether you are um whether you have the opportunity to do that because of, of your financial circumstances or whether you can work part-time and do this but um I would not say that this this role realistically will pay your mortgage yeah yeah I, I think, think that's I think, very I think I think I think it's really important to say that um it it's it is a uh, it's a huge I'm I have a complimentary therapies business it's part of my it's one of the services that I part of I provide mm -hmm. um, um I'll give you an example I I may be supporting the dying person but when the die you know people have contacted me oh can I my neck hurts my you know the issues aren't always in the tissues so people will find me you know because I'm a complementary therapist or I I'm an aromatherapist um yeah uh, all that kind of stuff so they they access me you know it's kind of like I, I did liken myself to a Swiss army knife you know <laughs> Which which, which 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 service do you need today? Yeah, which yeah. do you need today? So I would just say, think carefully um, that it's it's a model that you will blend into something else. Yeah, I think I think. Um, um, and um, yeah. and is it is it really is it just the self employed route or are there organisations well, like you've been you mentioning Felicity? You, you I don't know. know. You know what? You know what? Um, without sounding like I'm contradicting myself, there is a trend now where um, organisations are starting to employ soul midwives and end of life doulas, and to bring the doulas in there. People are really looking at the model big time, and I think it's not going to be long before people are going to be paid to do that work. Um, I know one soul midwife who's is employed by an organization and sole midwife at this yeah. organization so i think watch this space yeah. especially in the doula sector as well and the so yeah and again the sole midwife sector we're kind of an untapped resource it's it's warming up and i think if as a warm-up this as a warm-up it'd be really good to, for people to start warming up and looking um the future's bright. It's not orange, you know. Yeah. It, the future's bright. I think. I think that the, the here comes the sun. Uh, yeah. We we are we are really um, going to be on the map. I think if people, I've got, I would say there are some some midwives who are really compassionately on it, and they will be lobbying GPs, lobbying funeral directors, really working the floor, really, and that's. That can build build up to a, a business, but it does take it, it it takes a lot of time. Yeah, no, um, and that's more. it's important that people know that and hear that. Yeah, and thank and you for being honest about it. Like, it takes lots of time, but I, I'm just saying, just just be on the lookout. Um, there are a lot lot more articles about soul midwives. Yeah, um, the Mary Curie does it's got a really good website about that about um midwives. Um, at some point people are going to recognize that um we um that we can provide such an amazing um service to organizations that are time compromised I won't say time poor time compromised um and sometimes it's whether people are able to pay for it um or whether they see it as a voluntary role um i think it's in our sector to really do the marketing Mm -hmm. um not not on a micro level but on a macro level as well to do the marketing and i'm just getting a very good um 
instinct that that it's 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 getting there i'm going to yeah. do a big shout out to doc, dr Catherine mannix um uh, she wrote with the end in mind and she was one of the people one of her her book with the end in mind really inspired me to 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 do my to take the step into somebody with free training so and i know she is really very very respected and um i think a lot of ears are hearing um the soul midwife and doula movement as well as felicity's award-winning um yeah we're getting there yeah we're getting there brilliant brilliant so it's kind of exciting it's exciting space to be yeah, in exciting space to be in mm. dying is exciting yeah it's an exciting definitely. enterprise I, I do you know what i think i think death is fascinating because i think if anything it, death is what gives life meaning so why we don't spend more time talking about death and actually appreciating and enjoying the conversation because we're all going to face it as you say it just seems like right. a bizarre it's one of those things that nobody ever seems comfortable talking about oh let's not talk about why not let's talk about it it's actually not talking about it makes it more scary i think, the other thing, that, everyone. I think the other thing that um that's quite interesting if people need to link it in with we're living longer mm. And we're living longer, some people are living longer with really complicated um, illnesses. Yeah. And one of the things that I find really interesting is how lonely people feel in a diagnosis and how lonely people feel around their mortality when they've been given a diagnosis at whatever age. Yeah. And then, so therefore we should be, there should be a thirst for life. Yeah and to make every day count. Um, and what do we learn from the dying that we need to live our best lives? Absolutely, we need, we need so much more of that yeah. voice in society, right? Mm. It's what keeps mm. us real and humble. Mm. Um, one, of the, one of the kind of the last questions I had for you was I wanted, what do you, I mean, it's not everyone in the same way that we're saying we don't always talk about death. You know, some people would find it abhorrent the idea of working in, you know, a morgue, working in the death sector. What is it about the death sector and working with the dying that you love? Goodness me. That you're invited in. The, the, the privilege to... To offer the offer the person an opportunity to tell the best story that they can ever tell about themselves, about who they are, who they've been. Um, if I don't, it's difficult to find the words, but it makes me smile that question because. Oh, goodness me, like, I, I don't know, I was just looking out the window, I just looked at a rose, a rose makes me smart. I, 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 I think it's, it's that effective altruism, it's that giving and learning, it's that reciprocal, reciprocal um, uh, enterprise that you're, you're, you're with someone at the end, in a, unconditionally absolutely unconditional and um and that families and other people are bearing witness to to that prospect and also that for those people who are unbefriended and who who i think for me the most touching part element of it is when somebody hasn't got anyone and that i and that i was and that i've been there and yeah. that um and that i've made a difference and that they've also made a difference to me. And even the person who feels that they've not been worthy of anything, um, that there was someone there. And um, in the end, yeah. you what know, um, and, and there's passion in that um, because no one should die alone. And um, yeah, so it's a mustard seed of difference and there's no ego in it. It's just, um, yeah, compassion, which teaches one about self-compassion as well. Yeah. Um, 
and it just um, feeds on itself. So it's, yeah. It's it's clear listening to you and, and watching you actually that you do get a lot from this. But what would your what, on your reflections and doing this role for some time now? What are the qualities that you think you know would lend themselves? You know, for someone who is considering this as as a potential future for them, what kind of qualities in your mind would make them a good soul midwife? Well, I've got a list. <laughs> because um for me it's really important that um that people hear this um yeah i think it's really important that uh, people hear this um can i so um, this is my little little thing like i'm going to say to people a role like this requires a sense of emotional security and the ability to know when to set boundaries. Setting boundaries can be hard, especially when your role is precisely to guide someone through the trying, through the most trying time of their life. And seeing people transition from life to death can be jarring. This could be real. So it is helpful when we can maintain the practice of mindfulness. So we need to look after our own heads and serenity. That's the most exquisite part of this work, the serenity for both ourselves and our clients. Um, and in this work, having experience with death of a loved one or a friend is not required, but it can be helpful. Yeah. And, and, it, and if, that, if someone hasn't had that experience, then it really is important to reflect on what their own mortality. Um, no matter how many stories about death are read it can be very different when you're in a room with a dying person and i bring my my mother died in 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 last year and that was very interesting um so for, so for me it's really important that people have a level of death awareness so, so check out things like the good grief channel uh look at death awareness week and look at all those sorts of sorts of things um as I mentioned, coming to terms of our own mortality will also help in this role because watching someone die can be really unsettling and the deterioration of those flowers in the vase. Being compassionate and heart led, it takes a lot of courage and a heart of compassion to guide someone to their death. And uh, the doula, the end of life doula platform says this and the soul midwife says this. And you may listen to a dying person share their emotional pain and stories. We are in a position of privilege. And they may express regrets. There's lots of things that, I've, that have been said to me that have not been said to families. Things that they feel guilty about or stuff that they're going to miss the most. And being able to listen with a non-judgmental mind and an open heart is critical. That's critical care. The more kind and gentle a soul midwife is, the safer the dying person will feel. And also I would say, and I say this to all complementary therapists, consider your motivation to become a soul midwife. Why are you here? What's brought you here? Am I gonna make money from this? Why are you here? Uh, and it may come from experience of taking care of an, their own loved one uh, during and after death. And I would just say to people, just uh, be as a health check and make sure that you're not coming to this it, whilst you're in the process of sorting out a family estate, what's your agenda? Make sure that you come to this process clean, blank slate and set yourself aside uh, to be a good servant. So that's my little List, yeah, thank really. you. you know, um, which is which is drawn which is drawn from other sources. I think we all doulas, soul midwives, what end of life people in the UK or wherever we are, we all say the same thing. This is the kind of bottom line. Listen with compassion. Listening with compassion and being able to hold space, hold silence. It's not when people don't speak out, they act out. And and um, you know, really, really 
you know, ob observation is a very, your powers of observation will, will change. Um, but that training will take you into that experience, you know. Um, so go seek and um, see what you find. Thank you. Um, was there anything final that you wanted to add before we wrap things up? Whilst I said it won't pay your mortgage, there might be a time in the future where, where it will pay your mortgage. Um, but just just um, have fun, have fun looking at looking at it. Um, um, and quite happy to to talk to people uh, about it. And um, you know, the Soul Midwife School um, has very little taste of bite bite sized sorts of courses that, that are worth looking at. Um, yeah. And I know with um, some people who've talked about, so, oh, I love all the smells and the sacred oils and all of that sort of sort of stuff. Well, well. If that's your stir fry rice, that's your stir fry rice. You just just go go have a look, have a look, see, shop around, see see what works. And it might be helpful to do. Um, and I've been asking soul midwives this, so like having a look at look at the doulas and having that like, do a compare and contrast, because you know different models might have suit different personalities, different training styles, length of training. Our trainings over a weekend. You've got a distance learning mod part and. Um, when I did my training, I was over for a weekend, three, three, three days, I think it was. Um, but you do a very big case study. And my case study project took me 18 months to do. Yeah. So it's kind of like you're not like stars in your eyes. Like who have you come as an overnight thing? Um, um, there, are a lot, there are lots of um, um, steps um, into, into this role, um, which, which um, is, is a profession. It's a sacred profession, you know, so. Fabulous. And I think you do it the most amazing justice. And well, thank well, you. I, I just, if, if and when I'm in that position, I would love you to be at my bedside. I think, uh, thank you for what you do. I think it's an increasingly, isn't it an important, I mean, it's, I don't know why we don't put more emphasis on this sort of thing in society. It sort of seems like the sort of thing that, Almost before people started working, it was absolutely the sort of thing that everyone would have experienced. Everyone in a community would have been holding hands and being around that person. And once we've kind of descended into jobs and salaries and things like that, it's almost like we've forgotten probably the most important part of life is from the point of death, isn't it? I think, you know, I would just say we're, we're having this conversation. So, and there are lots of conversations. There are lots of conversations everywhere. Those seeds are growing. You know, um, um, we, we've started a conversation and that, as I said, there are conversations going on like everywhere. So um, watch this space. Here comes the sun. <laughs>